Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's school committee meeting. Uh, Daryl, could you lead us in the pledge of allegiance, sure. please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a consent agenda, the minutes from December 12, 2019, and oath to bills and payroll. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as read. Second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the consent agenda? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. None. All right, we have two sections in the meeting for input from interested citizens, one now and one near <coughs> the end of the meeting. Are there any interested citizens who uh, would like to speak before the school committee? Seeing none, we'll go right into recognition. We have our student rep report. Maddie O'Meara is here tonight. Hello. All right. So at Shaker Lane, they have the Great Kindness Challenge coming up, and that's the week of January 27th. <coughs> and they said that they have a planned number of events to promote kindness throughout the week, which includes spirit days, an art project, and a community meeting, just to name a few. At Russell Street, students and staff are also looking forward to a mindfulness day, which is scheduled for next Wednesday. And they would like to say thanks to a grant paired by third grade teachers, Heather Love, Jessica Schofield, and Charity Bell, who will be joining them for a day to talk with students about strategies for mindfulness. And in addition, all students and staff will be making a glitter jar to be used for re relaxation. And at the high school, we have midterms coming up, <laughs> which <laughs> is the week of the 21st to the 24th. And we also have Kindness Week um, coming up too, which is, again, the week of the January 27th to the 31st. And we're painting murals around the school to promote kindness. And we also have a semi-formal dance, which is on February 1st. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, Dr. Punchy next on the recognition. I'd like to uh, thank one of our uh, community members who would like to remain anonymous for donating $500 to our uh, lunch program, school lunch program. Greatly appreciated to help us out with uh, the new balances. Right. Uh, one other recognition, uh, our, one of our grade two teachers at Shaker Lane, uh, Shane Ann Garlisi, is the uh, featured educator uh, for the month of January for MassQ. It's quite an honor. They look for educators that uh, use uh, multiple instructional strategies uh, with a technological focus to engage students in, in a variety of uh, learning strategies. And uh, very proud of Shana. And uh, Heidi uh, works very closely with all the staff, K-5, to so does Julie. And uh, this is a, a great example of how uh, our teachers are moving forward with technology to uh, improve instructional opportunities for our students. So thank you. Mm -hmm. right uh, new business. Uh, school committee representative to the Littleton, Town of Littleton Finance Committee. So Steve Moore, who is one of our two appointees, has resigned. As it was, the, uh, that appointment was up at the end of this year, the, the, the fiscal year, June 30th. So we would have brought that seat up for you know, people to apply if they wanted it. I t we received his resignation letter. That's fine. I talked to Gary Wilson, the chair of the, of the uh, FinCom. They would like to see us appoint someone for the interim, for the remainder, which is only a few months, but they would like to have someone seating, sitting in that seat during the, the budget process. So what we need to do is post, I think it's 30 days, correct me, Dr. Punchy, correct? So we want to yes. put that out there. And interested uh, citizens who want to sit on the FinCom for just the remainder of that term, they can certainly reapply when we that seat comes up in its natural progression, which we won't skip. We'll have to go through the process again in, in June um, or September, depending on how the timing works whether to, to our meeting schedule. But we will put somebody in for that full term at the end of this uh, fiscal year. Um, any questions on that? Uh, you can let all your friends and neighbors or people you don't like as much to want to see if they want to get involved and go to pink on meetings. You have too much free time. Why don't you volunteer for this? Exactly, exactly. How old are you, Maddie? 
All right, next uh, request from Dr. Clench had delayed school openings. Yes, every now and again uh, we're faced with a situation where we're able to do a two hour delay, and on those days where we have half day professional development or a half day of uh, parent interviews, we uh, run into a snag because we really cannot change that calendar unless we have an agreement with the uh, <coughs> Teachers Association. Uh, also, we need to approve it at the school committee level. But uh, what that does, in, in, instead of offering a full day of classes with the exception of the two hour delay, uh, we're forced to make up a, a full day at the end of the school year. On December 11th, we, we uh, tested the water. And uh, because we had parent teacher interviews in the afternoon and we were able to do a delay, uh, I made a decision to uh, move forward with the interviews in the afternoon and the evening because the, the weather was fine. Uh, having said that, I'm still in the process of negotiating a memorandum of understanding or agreement uh, with the uh, Educators Association. I've included this uh, clause in the agreement and I think it's the best way to move forward. I still would like the, the latitude and I put that in, in the uh, memorandum of, of agreement that I will make that decision whether we, we uh, keep the professional development or have a full day of, of classes. There are some circumstances that may allow us to uh, actually do that if, if I only had to do a 45 minute delay, for example, if we had a power outage or uh, uh, we had a water main break, things like that. So I wanted to make sure I was covered to, to be able to make those decisions uh, as being necessary. So I will, uh, if, if you're fine with it, first of all. Do you have any questions? So if sense? we, if we, if you chose to do a two-hour delay on a Wednesday where we were going to have professional development scheduled and you would not have the professional development, which allows us to have the, the, the enough hours of the day to qualify it as a day of instruction relative to the 180-day calendar, would we do the professional development another day or would we just lose that no, opportunity? We would, because professional <coughs> development is also listed in the... Uh, teacher's contract, we would have to reschedule oh. that professional development okay. for another afternoon. Okay. So we would we would keep it, we would just move it to another Wednesday, right. preferably, but depending on the time of year, then when exactly. we were squeezing the calendar, it could be a different day of the week, but we would fully expect, and the community would expect that there would be another early release day to replace it at some point in the calendar. Exactly. Okay. All right. Any other questions or thoughts? Uh, so, so do you need um, a motion from us to ask you to negotiate that with or uh, settle that agreement with the uh, well even just uh, I'm just trying to understand exactly yeah. what you're asking I think what, uh, what would be appropriate in this, in this situation is is to give the superintendent the authority to uh, alter professional development and interview uh, days as necessary prepare conference days as necessary uh, I'll make a motion to uh, Grant the uh, superintendent the latitude to uh, reschedule professional development and parent teacher conferences in the event of uh, delayed school openings. Seconded. All right. Is there any further discussion or questions on that? All right. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Thank you. And if uh, you could just, you know, go through the process on the MOA with the LEA and just let us know at the end. Sure. Just put the, the, the MOA that's agreed upon in our packet so we can mm -hmm. see it and, and review it and make sure we work out of what we all agreed to. All right, mm -hmm. terrific. All right, a couple presentations. We're going to start with the Hour of Code. Hi, thank you. Hello. Uh, so I'm Heidi McGregor. I'm the K-5 to STEM specialist at Shaker Lane and at Russell Street School. And, and the Hour of Code is something that Littleton has committed to. Um, Julie started it um, uh, with, with us um, recognizing it. So this is our sixth year doing the That's Hour of Code. I wondering how many years it's been. Six years. Um, and, you know, the first couple of years, you know, not every um, student got it. You know, it, it took a little time to get some momentum. And now every student is doing it. 
and it's it's pretty it's a pretty amazing process. So um, I feel like I had to really step up my game this year, because a lot of the students, especially the third, fourth, and fifth graders, have been there, done that. They've seen all of this great coding stuff that's out there. So I'll give you a little look at at what um, what we did this year. Um, so there's a little video. Oh, there we go. There's a video that I was, um, one, this is one of the videos that I um, shared with some of the students just to get them uh, understanding how important it is for them to um, understand how technology works and how it's going to affect their future and how they are actually going to change the world by having this knowledge and these, this skill base. Um, that's okay. And this is a video, it's one of many videos that the organization Code dot org puts out there uh, for educators to use with kids. Build has some big problems, but I'm good at what can I do. Even when problems seem big, we can tackle them one step at a time. Our generation can help make a more prosperous, equitable, and sustainable world. I'm learning to code. I'm designing apps that solve local problems. I'm programming robots. I'm learning computer science to make change happen. Because with technology, we can build robots to clean more oceans. We can program drones to detect forest fires quickly. We can empower young women with digital skills and tools. We can program mobile apps to streamline farming in more rural areas. We can use gene sequencing to diagnose diseases. And create personalized medicine to cure them. I'm little, but don't look at my size. Look at my potential. I can make change happen. I can make change happen. I can make change happen. Change so usually this video, I follow up with some conversations around, you know, that kind of the days are over that the people, the only people who would learn how to code would be people who wanted to become computer scientists or professional coders. It's now becoming something that every adult um, in this new generation of kids, every adult is going to have some, some exposure to understanding how coding works. Um, so what we did, nope, wrong way. <laughs> so at Shaker Lane, um, we did a, 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 every grade level have a, had a slightly different experience that built, um, built forward. So our kindergartners learned um, computational thinking, which is the thinking that goes behind coding, by using these little code and go mouse kits. And on these um, mice, there are arrows, um, and the students have to create a maze with the green tiles. Um, and then there's a piece of cheese at the end of the maze, and they have to figure out um, how, which buttons they will need to pick um, and press before they press the green go button for the mouse to be able to follow the maze to find the cheese. So the thinking that they're doing to be able to plan for that is the computational thinking that they will need as they get older. Our kindergartners also um, worked with our Ozobot robots, which are um, small robots that can read drawn lines so students can code them by using markers and different colored markers. So the students in the picture have um, some lines that they've drawn, and you can see the little glowing robot. They're, they're very small. Um, and when they set the robot onto the lines, the robot will follow the lines. Um, and you can change the colors, and the robot res respond to different colors. There's also ways to code the robot by making different dots and dashes of different color sequences that m will make the robot spin or go backwards or turn around. Um, and that's something our first and second graders are starting to figure out pretty quickly. <laughs> They're very savvy. Um, and then our first graders continue to work with the Ozobots, so they're working with the Ozobots also, but they're using an app on the iPad where they can code them um, using an app, and the, ro um, the robots actually travel along the surface of an iPad. So we just kind of took them up one step further. The first graders are also using uh, a program called Osmo, which is a, a setup with an iPad, and the coding blocks are these little magnetic plastic coding blocks 
that they can put in a certain sequence and when they physically press the button on the coding blocks, it makes the character on the iPad follow their instructions. So it's the same kind of computational thinking that they were doing when they were doing the code and go mouse, but now they're doing it with a digital component combined with the physical component. Um, and our second graders were also got another shot at the Osmo this year for Hour of Code. Um, and then we introduced something new to our second graders this year, and they used a program called Scratch Junior, which is an iPad-based, block-based coding app where they could um, create animations and um, stories. Some of the students started um, figuring out that they could make the characters on their screen say different things, either by recording their own voices or by typing in speech bubbles. Uh, and they, we really had a lot of fun with that. Um, and the reason why we um, introduced Scratch Junior with our second graders is because the third graders all um, get their Scratch, their um, school-based Scratch accounts, which is our um, a platform for coding at, at Russell Street School. Um, so this was a little preliminary look at that. All right, so at Russell Street, um, we were very, very fortunate this year to get some new robots. They're called Root Robots, R-O-O-T. Uh, and the Root Robots are made for, by the company iRobot, the same company that makes the vacuum cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> These robots, um, robots, unfortunately, do not clean my makerspace. <laughs> Try as I might. Um, but what we did with the help of this um, amazing um, parent volunteer um, with the third grade team, uh, care name is Carrie Buckley. I would like to uh, uh, definitely recognize um, all the help that she gave me. Um, so she came in for every single third grade class. So we had six third grade classes, and she was there with every group um, to be able to help them with learning how to code our new robots. Um, and these robots have an app that go with them, and they also have a capability where they, um, they can draw, and they can read what you've drawn. Um, they're also magnetic, and the kids kind of figured that out organically. Mrs. Temple found out when they were, they, <laughs> they were in the hallway, and they figured out that their robots could climb, they could program them to climb up their lockers. <laughs> it was a very, very exciting day. <laughs> but they can also climb, and they can code them to climb on our magnetic whiteboards. And um, when you have an expo marker inserted in the center of the robot, the students can code the robots to draw shapes and spell things. And it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. We had, um, I had a group of fifth graders. This was not an hour of code activity, but a group of fifth graders figured out how to code a star. And the robot um, drew a star on the board. It was pretty neat. Um, so that's what our third graders got to, got to do. Um, and then our fourth and fifth graders did two very similar activities. One is they did um, uh, code.org has these fantastic, fantastic activities um, that are online, and every year they add a few new things. Dance Party <laughs> and Minecraft are probably our most popular in the fourth and, grade, fourth and fifth grade groups. Um, but um, code.org just released this year um, an artificial intelligence activity where the students can train their AI, their artificial intelligent robot, on the, on the um, Chromebook. They can train it to recognize the difference between a fish and a piece of trash. And then they go into the next level, and they can um, see if their robot can sort um, trash out of an ocean using artificial intelligence. Um, so next year, uh, who knows what they'll come up with next, but I think we'll be continuing to push that envelope. Um, and just a thought about Dance Party, I almost forgot to mention it. Um, so Dance Party is a really very engaging um, coding activity for the students where they pick a song, a popular song, and then they can pick these different characters, they can choose what characters they want, and they can teach their characters different dance moves like dabbing and flossing. <laughs> I can dab, but I can't floss. Um, but anyway, so, um, so the kids really, really enjoy that. Um, and I was talking with our new Unified Arts um, teacher who's um, at Shaker Lane, and in her physical education classes during the week of Hour of Code, she did an unplugged dance party, <coughs> and she built a huge cardboard um, um, 
poster, I guess, or display with the different dance moves and the students took turns being the programmer and then the kids in the physical education class would have to do the dance moves. Um, so she did an unplugged hour of code that was really great. That was uh, Mrs. Brzezinski who did that. It was, it was a really neat project. Um, and then the big thing that our fourth and fifth graders got to do that um, were, was pretty amazing um, is thanks to the Russell Street PTA and the Littleton Middle School PTA combined forces and they bought us a total of six programmable drones. Um, so I went into every fourth and fifth grade class. There's one class that I lost due to a snow day. I'm going to try to get them later. <laughs> um, and I, we talked about drones and we talked about um, some of the cool things that are happening um, with technology. And then we used an app called Drone Blocks. Um, and, I, um, I and the kids learned how to code the drones to fly up, do flips, land, all sorts of great things like that. <laughs> um, and so let me pass it off to Todd Shoemaker. Hello, I'm Todd Shoemaker, the middle school technology teacher. And, uh, and we talked about when the hour code came up, how many job, potential jobs there will be in the future. So they said about two million unfulfilled jobs when these kids will graduate from either high school or college in programming. So it's important to get them started in that. Um, for the sixth graders, <coughs> for the sixth graders, I had them go to the Hour of Code website, and we started off with challenging lessons using loops and blockly. Uh, the student here on the left was, uh, was trying to create uh, the puzzle, and she wasn't using loops, so she had the, the character go straight, turn 60 degrees, go straight, turn 60 degrees, when she could have used the loop. So let her work with that a little bit, and, and I said, well, let's try something new here. Let's throw a loop in there, and, you know, the, the light bulb goes off. Wow, this is pretty neat with computational thinking and whatnot. So the students used, drag, uh, used uh, drop blocks uh, to code a given task. For some of the students, this lesson was pretty challenging. Uh, for some other students, uh, the loop lesson uh, they were able to handle it, and they worked and, and moved on to other topics like uh, if statements and variables. So they were able to choose through the hour of code what level they needed to. And I, I noticed that some of the kids did the dance party. I'm like, okay, you, this is pretty easy. But they loved to use that program because you know, it's loud and noisy. And so let's move on to something a little more difficult. Let's push ourselves here. Uh, so the next few weeks, uh, in the next few weeks, the sixth graders will continue working with their c uh, computer skills in a scratch program, and we're going to do a lesson shared with the geography teacher, Mrs. Pennard. Uh, the students are going to use the scratch program to uh, program a story explaining information about the Asian countries they're learning about right now. And they're going to use characters, dialogue, and pictures to describe two physical features, three facts about culture, two important landmarks, a fact about the weather, and two interesting facts about their choice. So they're going to use Scratch now, using some of the, the things they've learned in the Hour of Code here, to create a totally programmable lesson with, uh, with Scratch. Uh, they have to have their characters walk using loop commands and costumes. They'll change the backgrounds with key commands, encode broadcast, and receive uh, to exchange dialogue between two of the characters explaining what, uh, what's going on with their country. Uh, this programmable lesson brings out their creativity and challenges their computational thinking and organizational skills. All right, the seventh grade, can we play the video? Did that? Yes. This is a student who, uh, you can see how excited she is. Madison, yeah. Yeah, you can see how excited she is when she finally figures out what she's doing. program to do the same thing five times. How do we do that? Right. 
Okay, so how many times are you gonna have it? There you go. Puzzle to, to solve, and, and she spent a few time, a few minutes, you know, processing. Okay, what are the steps? And then we started to figure out the loops and nested loops where the program could build pieces of it and then do the final thing six times. So, um, some of the, the concept was pretty difficult for some of the kids. But like I said, once they they got that, they were able to move on. Uh, for seventh grade, um, the seventh graders played a programming uh, game called Code Combat. Uh, in this game, the students use the programming language Python to complete various missions. Uh, they are required to make their characters move through difficult mazes, attack multiple villains, and gather treasures and gear. The seventh graders moved on from block, drag, and drop program to typing the code in themselves and testing the program to see if it worked. It was great to see the students collaborate. They're helping each other through the maze here and share ideas on different ways to complete the missions. They enjoyed the program so much, they begged to use Code Combat an extra day, and I obliged. So they were having so much fun with coding, I wasn't going to stop them. Um, Dan Hogan at the high school is using Python as, in his computer science class, so this exercise was a great way to introduce students to the, uh, the same programming language. So we'll bring that up. All right, for our eighth graders, okay, they, uh, the eighth graders use Khan Academy. Uh, they have an account that they use with their math uh, lessons and were introduced to JavaScript by completing the first lesson called Drawing Basics and Coding. In this lesson, students use the ellipse, rectangle, line, and fill commands to build and color a generic snowman scene. The next week, the students stepped it up a notch in a STEM STEAM uh, project by using what they've learned earlier and coded Frosty the Snowman. Um, the original lesson was very, pretty basic, and these guys really went ahead and, and found the Bezier command, the, the, um, the stroke command to help to bring out uh, characteristic of the hat, and uh, the curve command to, to give Frosty a smile. This was a fun and engaging way to introduce JavaScript during the, uh, right before the holidays. So some of these kids went well beyond and had you know, 60, 70 lines of code. Uh, this was all done on the computer, creating drawings uh, in, in a STEAM project. Uh, a new program that I'm excited about is an app builder called Glide. I stumbled on this over break, and uh, I'm learning it right now. Uh, it's, it's based on Google Slides as the database, so the kids can input through the app into Google Slides, use functions, and uh, create outputs on the app. So I'm trying to come up with some lessons right now and learn this program myself to teach them. I think it's a fabulous app program that will tie in with uh, the Google platform that we use. And uh, finally, again, I'd like to thank the PTA for the, the drones. Um, Russell Street used them first, and we're, we have them now. We're going to calibrate them, and um, I'm going to run through the drones with the engineering club first to get the ins and outs of it, and they're excited to play with that, and then we're going to bring it into the classroom and code with that as well. So. Uh, the hour of code at the middle school turned out being a week and a half of code. It wasn't just an hour. Uh, we ran with it quite a long time, and the, the students were really engaged, and uh, we're looking forward to do some more coding. So thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? No, this is great. Oh, stuff. You feel like you're going back in time, Daryl? Mm -hmm. Looking back, like trying to figure out how to do stuff. I was like, it was deja vu for me. <laughs> All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Six years is a long time. It's, uh, but it sounds like year by year we've been getting more uh, aggressive about stuff. And I appreciate the understanding the differentiation as they get older. We've got to, like you said, up our game. And, uh, and it's great to think that yeah, some of the stuff that they're getting now will translate directly into some of the coursework they're going to do in the high school. So that's been great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good job. Thank you. All right. Next, we are going to talk about the draft calendar for the 2020-2021 school year. What school year? 
<laughs> so, did you want to uh, talk about the calendar? Sure. You can, I can start. You can see from uh, uh, September, we uh, have a proposed uh, staff day back September 1st. Students back on the 2nd uh, and 3rd, and then a uh, Friday off, and uh, Monday, of course, is Labor Day. And then we start uh, back in that week. Uh, pretty Everything else is pretty standard. Uh, if we go to, I'm sorry, Beth, I should probably laugh after I <laughs> said something to you. I'll just do one more, and I'm going to hand it. We'll split it in half. How's that? Perfect. If you look at uh, the December calendar, you'll notice that our last day is the 23rd of December. Opposed, and uh, we come back Monday, January 4th. I'll turn it over to you now, Beth. Okay, so I think you hit the main points. Um, Sorry. That, no, 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 <laughs> perfect. Talk to you. Um, so we will come back before um, Labor Day because Labor Day is falling a little bit later, and so we will start September 1st with students coming back the second, but letting um, everyone have that long weekend with the Friday off. Um, throughout you see our 12, um, 14 half days that are in red, 12 of them are half days with professional development in the afternoon for our staff. Otherwise, the vacations um, are pretty standard as in past years, as well as the conferences and um, back to school and curriculum evenings. The reason why we've asked for a uh, first reading this evening is, is twofold. First of all, I wanted to give you the opportunity to think about the calendar and bring it back uh, second meeting in January. Uh, this is the earliest that we've ever brought a calendar forward to. That was one of our goals that uh, we set last summer. And uh, secondly, uh, the Shaker Lane uh, administration and Russell Street administration want to review the first round of interviews, or sorry, parent-teacher conferences using my love interviews, that's a Canadian term. Uh, right now they're in December and you know, that's quite a, in our opinion, that's quite a long time before getting the parents in and, and having conversations about uh, how their children are doing. So they're going to be hopefully bring back a proposal uh, for us when we bring the calendar back at the next meeting to uh, have those uh, parent conferences, I believe sometime in November. Is that correct? Yep, there's okay. no discussion. All right, so you want to wait till then for an if, actual if we could, that would be okay. great. Um, any questions or thoughts in answer to what we see here? Um, I have one question that was brought to me by somebody in town, um, and I actually had no answer. Why do we have half days on Wednesdays? Well, you know, that's we've we've tried different days of the week, mm -hmm. and and that day just seems to uh, fit in well with. Yeah. with how we've, we've scheduled. We've, we have tried a few Friday afternoons every now and again, but uh, you know, we, we prefer Wednesdays, midweek. Uh, we still have sure. a good two days of learning and, and uh, attendance uh, is good <laughs> yeah. during midweek. So, so yeah. for us, we, we, we just, we're trying to optimize a number of factors, and, and obviously one is attendance. We right. want to make sure that uh, attendance stays up. And uh, secondly, uh, we, you know, we have two days before, and then we have two days after to continue the learning process. That's our rationale. My thought would be human nature would indicate to me that if you did it on a Friday, some families are going to skate the whole yeah. day yeah. <laughs> to take advantage of it and do something, which is, isn't necessarily inherently, you know. Yeah. But Dr. Clancy's right. Our purpose is to keep them you know, in school five days a week of the weeks that we have five days of school. So. I think that's the that's the right way to go. I think the big takeaway uh, for the community otherwise is that this is a pre-Labor Day start. We don't typically do that, but it is uh, almost as late as it can be uh, on the 7th. So I think that we've done it before in the past. I think it was recently, what, three years ago? 15, 16 was yeah, last time, 15, and then the year before okay. as well. Yeah. So... Uh, and it's, uh, I, we really like the... the uh, layout of, of this calendar in terms of that first week where we have uh, uh, we start school and then we have a four-day weekend prior to getting back so all right all right so we'll look forward to you bringing it back with the final version the uh, parent teacher conferences worked in there great thank you mm -hmm. uh, following it is the proposed school committee calendar for next year as well yeah next up <coughs> 
potential dates for uh, retreat. We usually only use <coughs> one day, but just in case we would like another day, we schedule it. So August 20, 20th, 21st. And uh, first uh, <coughs> meeting, meeting in September is the 17th, 2 in October, actually 3 in October. And uh, 1 in November, 2 in December, 2 in January, 1 in February, 2 in March, 2 in April, 2 in May, and the last meeting uh, prior to summer break would be June 3rd, 2021. Uh, the public hearing uh, is, is always uh, scheduled uh, so that we meet uh, statutory requirements in, in terms of having that public hearing uh, so many days prior to the town meeting. So it always has to be so our last meeting is scheduled for June 3rd, but look, going back up to the academic calendar, the best case last day is June 18th, right? No, no snow days, or does that include snow days? Ah, uh, that's without snow days. Right. So would we want to think about getting it? So it's highly likely that we're going to bleed into the, the week of the 22nd, 23rd, 24th for academics. Do we want to think about having one more meeting on the 17th? Okay. I know in the spring, sometimes our agendas get jammed up pretty good as we're kind of sprinting towards that finish line. Sure. I think if, it's, if you guys are good with it, I think we should think about putting it on there. If we decide we don't need to do it, we can always take it off, depending on how the school year goes. Sounds good. So it mm -hmm. should be the 17. And if you're <coughs> fine with that, you can uh, certainly uh, entertain a motion uh, with the addition of the uh, meeting on June 17th, 2021. Make a motion to approve the uh, proposed school committee meeting calendar for July for 2021. Sorry. School year 2021 <laughs> with the addition of the June 17th meeting. Second. second. All right, motion made and seconded. Any further discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. All right, we're cruising right along. We're already at the second uh, option, uh, uh, section of the meeting for input from interested citizens. Any interested citizens? No. Going to subcommittee reports, PMBC. Uh, just one, one item just before you go to, to that. I Order. saw a note from the uh, town clerk that we need to notify the Board of Selectmen. Yes, so what I'm going to do about that is, uh, so she, right, we have a resignation on the school committee. Erica Podgorny has resigned, um, so we have to notify the Board of Selectmen. I took a look at the proposed letter sent by the clerk, and I had a phone conversation with her. What I would like to do before we send that particular letter is to email uh, the town administrator and the chair of the Board of Selectmen and get on their agenda to talk about how we, because as a joint, if we do appoint someone to fill out the, the, the rest of this year, then we would have a special election as part of the regular election uh, in uh, May. And so the question is, do we want to fill the seat between now and that special election? And I would like to have a discussion with the Board of Selectmen, and if we decide that that's what we want to do, then we'll post it similar to what we discussed about the uh, resignation on the FinCon, post it for 30 days, see who's interested. If there's more than one, we would it would be a joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen again to interview them and appoint someone. So what I'm going to do in response to uh, the uh, email from the cl uh, town clerk is to get on the agenda for the Board of Selectmen. It'll be a joint meeting, just that way if we all want to come, we can, not have to worry about open meeting violation. Um, and have a discussion about how we, we want to proceed. And then if we come to consensus, once we come to consensus on that, then it might be that night and then we'll post or we might decide that as a, as a group of nine that we're going to decide to just leave it open until that special election. We can figure that out. Um, yeah, my, I mean, my thoughts on that is, is that I think we want to get the notification in ASAP so they can know that they're going to have to put it on the ballot. Uh, because I don't know right. what the yes, ballot that part sure absolutely and Correct. if we do that independent of scheduling yes. the meeting that with part the that part and right that that part is is independent of the joint appointment procedure 
Right. But yes, we can definitely. Yeah, I don't want them to get yeah. in actually serialized. Uh, there. Yeah, that. So that's not exactly what Diane was asking for, but you're right. What we can do is forward uh, Erica's email to her as notification that she, as the administer, administrator of our town elections, mm -hmm. that she's going to have that as a special election because that's going to happen no matter what. Right. But we, we don't. I know, I know this had happened like 10 or 12 years ago, and it ended up that they didn't get the notification right. in time and had to do a special election. special election. No, they did, did a one year appointment because oh, there was no, okay. they didn't want to schedule an election oh, okay. just for the Okay. The, right. you, know, you know, so I think yeah. we got to watch that timing. Yeah. Right. I think we're 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 in pretty good shape because uh, it should the idea that uh, we we may or may not appoint because we're getting closer. We're not all that close to the, yeah. the May election, but you're right. The notification now should allow Diane plenty of time right. to so, so maybe if you could clarify writing. the language in the yeah. letter back to her yeah. that you know right, to go ahead you're going to separate the two I'll do activities. That. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, there. And that that's going to go out. That email will go out tomorrow. And then you know, um, you know, my thoughts just in general is you know by the time we post it for 30 days, schedule a joint meeting. We're already at the election, pretty close. Uh, pretty close to it. Uh, to it. Uh, yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. I, I do feel that because it is a joint appointment, that that discussion should yep. be among the nine of us, the four remaining school community members and the five board of select meetings. And I think the easiest thing to do is get on their agenda, although conceivably, depending on what their meeting schedules and what their agendas look like, we could certainly do it here, although it would be another night out for them versus another night out for us at their meeting. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, we will work that um, now, uh, and that will get taken care of. So that's fine. All right. Now PNBC. Uh, let's see. I don't. I don't think we met since the last time we met at, on school committee uh, there. Um, but I do want to mention one thing. I saw the notification that the um, school uh, improvement uh, commit board is open for uh, proposals for um, school uh, projects. Yeah, statement of statement interest. Statement of interest mm -hmm. uh, there. I know we are thinking about the Shaker Lane project, but I. It would encourage us to be thinking about uh, submitting a roof replacement for the high school also, since we're probably, you know, there is funding available through that, that means for the roof replacement, and I suspect that that's on the order of a big ticket item. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, numbers of about a million dollars or so have been thrown around for a roof replacement uh, there, so we probably don't want to miss the opportunity if we could get some funding. Or, with right, the, or, the or, right. or have to wait longer to replace the roof. Well, place the roof that we might <coughs> choose to. Well, you, you, you might not have a choice of replacing You might not, but you might, you know, you might. Yeah, and and the, of which we would foot the whole bill right. uh, at that point. Uh, That's a good point. Uh, I, I know it might not be typical to do two requests at the same time, but I think we, we want to be thinking about that. Sure. Uh, there, so I, if we could just take that into account. Yeah. Okay. Uh, budget subcommittee. Um, Again, we're just kind of waiting for the uh, meeting with the Board of Selectmen where they review all the budget requests by the various town departments. That's going to be later this year. We, typically, we would have already had it, um, but they're rejiggering that calendar a little bit. The one thing that uh, has I have seen go by via email is there was discussion about uh, moving some of the things that we had put into capital back to the operating budget both on the school department side and there are also some items on the town side that the new town uh, accountant had indicated she thought would be better placed. And we just got agreement from them that if we move those things over there that the money that we have been allocating out of the capital budget over the last several years for those items would go seamlessly into the operating budget so there wasn't an, a, an increase or that we would have to find that money in the the current operating budget, that the operating budget would go up to continue to support that. They agree with that, so we should be uh, semantically in, in line uh, with our expectation. Our expectations are in line with what they're going to execute on, so we're in good shape there. Um, other than that, we don't have anything else to report at this time. All right. Policy subcommittee? Um, let's see. I, I had a, just a discussion with Kelly to sort of map out a path for the next couple of months uh, with uh, making a thrust uh, focus on uh, policy updates. Uh, I think uh, we should have ready for next meeting, first reading of reviewed uh, policies, probably about 20 to 30 of them. 
uh, and then we're going to start tackling all of the instruction ones. Did we agree on? Yes. Uh, there to make sure that we can, that'll be the next batch uh, that we'll target for probably two to <coughs> one or two meetings after the February uh, batch that's coming in. And I think we're also bringing for second reading tonight uh, the updated uh, animals in uh, schools policy. Looking forward to the candy in the future. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to review that one right now? Yes. Uh, yeah. I think that is included in the package. Yes, it is. Uh, mm -hmm. Got it. Yep. And if I remember the emails back and forth, all of the uh, edits suggested from the previous meeting have been incorporated mm -hmm. into the policy. Are there any comments or questions on this before we submit it for a motion? Hopefully not, because this is a second reading and we did have some, <laughs> some good debate on it the last time. All right. If we're all happy with it, I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to accept for second reading uh, policy IMG annals and schools. Second. Motion made a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that, Daryl. All right. Any other business? All right. Hearing none, I don't think we need executive session tonight. So I will entertain a motion for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Motion made a second. Up. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. Great. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, LCTV. We'll see you in two weeks. Okay.